welcome back to my channel. So May is Pediatric Stroke Awareness Month and I'm a pediatric stroke survivor. I really want to make a video, at least like one video dedicated to bringing awareness to pediatric stroke because there's so a lot of people that don't know that kids, babies can have stroke literally at any age. Before birth, during birth, after birth, like literally at any age you can have a stroke. And I want to bring some more awareness. So back in actually 2009, I was in a book and I actually have two versions of th these books because they came out with two different versions. I don't know if they have done another one, but I have only... Got, I only got two. So the first one is this one and it says kids have strokes too. So it's basically a book of stories about pediatric stroke survivors, kids that have had strokes. And it's from Castle and actually I'll read you a little bit. So it's this one person that has a son who has um who had a stroke. And her name is, I'm, I'm not going to say her name right, I'm so sorry, but, um, Packy Scarborough, uh, I'll put her name, like, right here, but she opposed CASA, which if you don't know what, who, what CASA is, it's an organization, actually, it says right here in the book, so I'll just read you what it says in the book, so, it's a non-profit organization dedicated to imp improving the lives of children and families affected by pediatric stroke and other causes of hemiplegia. So I remember this was the first book and my mom got it and I was like, OMG, like, <laughs> I want to be in this book. <laughs> like, how cool is it to be in a book? When they decided to do a second version of the book and include more stories of pediatric stroke survivors, I was like, yes, I need to be. <laughs> in this book. So my mom wrote the whole thing and I'm going to read it to you. I haven't read it fully in a while so it would be kind of fun to read it um, knowing just like how far I've come but I will show you well I'll show you me. I'm not on the back of the book but yes that's me right here. This book came out in 2009 the first one in 2008 so I was like 10, but almost 11 when um, my mom wrote my story. Um, so yeah, it was so special. And I don't know if they have done more books like this. I'm not sure. And I don't know if you can still get these books, but it's just so special. And I have read a lot of these stories. I want to say, I don't know if I have read like everyone, <laughs> but I've read a lot. And for me, to, from my perspective of, you know, being a pediatric stroke survivor, it's just, it's so amazing to, like, know that there's other people, other kids who have had, you know, similar experiences to me and, you know, similar struggles and challenges and just, like, it's so amazing to know that, like, I'm not alone and, you know, other kids have had strokes too and yeah it's just so important to bring awareness because so to this day even in 2023 you know people are so surprised to hear that kids can have strokes so before i say what my mom wrote in this book i wanted to also talk about other like resources like Chasa is amazing and I will link Chasa website in the description box because it has so many good resources and I know my like parents, my family, like it was so helpful for them, especially when I was first diagnosed. Also there's plenty of like Facebook groups and just like organizations as well. But yeah, there's one that I follow on Facebook and I believe they have like Instagram too and just like other social medias as well. But it's called International Alliance for Pediatric Stroke and that one is amazing and they actually reached out not that long ago um, asking me to do a video for them because they post you know a bunch of videos of pediatric stroke survivors and you know parents and all that throughout the month of May and I did one. So um, I'll link that video somewhere, either in the description box or like somewhere, <laughs> I'll link that and maybe like I can link their page as well on Facebook and Instagram if you want to go see it because my video 
should be up by the time this video is posted. But yeah, I did like a layup basketball, um, how I play, you know, with one arm. So that was so much fun to do. And I'm so happy, you know, they wanted me to do a video because, you know, I love making videos. So anyway, I would definitely recommend them as well from all like resources. And I know there's other ones too, but Chasa and um, International Alliance for Pediatric Stroke, I would definitely recommend for just, you know, seeing other pediatric stroke survivors, seeing other parents and realizing, you know, you're not alone is so, like, helpful, at least for me, because, you know, it can be hard, you know, sometimes just feeling like I'm alone and, you know, I don't know, you know, other, you know, kids, you know, who have had strokes. So yeah, now let me read you my story in this book, What My Mom Wrote. Um, I'm so excited to read it. <laughs> oh, first I'll show you, um, the pictures. So there is five pictures my mom decided to put in this book. And the first one is my dance figure, um, from dance. It looks like ballet. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Um, and then one is a first day of school. <laughs> um, Pick another one is I believe from like OT. That's pretty cool. Learning how to tie. That's neat. And then another one is a pick of me in the car. <laughs> and then of course one of me on the basketball court. Of course I had to do like my mom had to clue one of me playing basketball. Like how could she not? But yeah, that is what it looks like. And I'll show you guys a brief overview. Those are the pictures. Megan was born on May 28th, 1998. So my birthday, yes, is coming very, very soon. <laughs> I blew for a full charm baby girl. Okay, I'm glad you say I'm ugly. <laughs> I'm asking an ugly full charm baby girl. <laughs> Okay, I'm just about to say it. Um, a beautiful full term baby girl weighing a healthy 7 pounds, 13 ounces. We were thrilled to have completed our family of five. And Megan's older sister and brother eagerly helped me, easily helped welcome our newest family member. Megan was a feisty and spirited girl from day one. However, we didn't notice anything different or concerning in the early newborn period. But at around four months of age, Megan was only reaching for and playing with things using her left hand. I mentioned this to our pediatrician at the next visit. She said it was much too early for hand preference and this could indicate a problem. She immediately refers to early intervention for a developmental ass assessments, which quickly led to OT home visits, as well as a one weekly, one times weekly play group. We were also referred to a neurology appointment, but that's, that took much longer. In the meantime, the OT told us she wondered if Megan had obtained a brassel play check injury during childbirth, childbirth as it appeared that only her right arm and hand were affected. We were sure it must be something of that nature. We were not at all prepared for the shocking and unbelievable diagnosis the neurologist suggested after just a brief examination of our new, our uh, now six month old daughter. The neurologist told us as my six month old bounced and barber on my barber on my lap that she expected Megan had obtained damage to the left hemisphere of her brain, but that they would need to perform an MRI to confirm this. Further, she said that Megan was showing signs of weakness throughout the entire right side of my whole body. Consistent with that diagnosis. Yeah, so in the beginning, it was mostly like my arm, which makes sense because, you know, my leg is definitely stronger than my arms. The MRI which was performed at eight and a half months of age, getting faster, a large area of damage to the left hemisphere, 
in the modern language area of the brain. A rough mega cerebral artery in fact I'll definitely put, you know, these um charms on like the screen, like I promise. We were sung as the neurologists show us the image from the MRI. We were told she would be given the diagnosis cerebral palsy, that nothing about her future could be predicted, but that kids with long lesson have been known to do quite well. Wow. Nothing about my future could be predicted, but I'm very good coming, <laughs> and I like to prove people wrong, you know? Fast forward 10 years, and Megan is a happy, funny, and bright young girl who loves life and trusts all her family. She has a weakness on the tired right side of her body, most apparent in her right arm and hand, a speech and language delay, and learning disabilities. She used her right hand mostly as an assist, usually with reminders, <laughs> still to this day. And she compromises quite well with, with many creative strategies to accomplish tasks. One example that stands out in my mind was in third grade, when all the students were expected to put their chairs up on, um, up on top of their guests at the end of the day. My initial response was that someone, the teacher, a fellow student, would need to help Megan. How could she flip her chair up on top of her guests one-handed? Well, all it took was an incredible PT, Ruthie. Oh my goodness. I remember Ruthie. She was one of my favorites. She was one of my favorites. Helped me a lot. She helped me a lot. And the determination of a remarkable eight-year-old to quickly prove this mother wrong. Megan was soon proud to show all that she too could put her chair on the desk every day. I remember that. <laughs> After many years of OT, PT, and speech therapy, Megan runs, dances, and rides three wheel bike. She loves sports, is a huge Boston Celtics fan, dance, ballet, tap, and jazz, and anything. <laughs> so, can I say this? I'll just say it. And anything here on my channel. <laughs> yes. Back when I was 10, I was obsessed with hammer care. The numerous therapies and specialist visits have, have tapered off over time. We have come to learn that, especially at her age now, it is the sports and activities we saw her best therapies. We are so grateful to all the amazing people, doctors, therapists, and teachers who have helped Megan accomplish many goals. And we know there will be many more challenges and goals to come. We are thankful for finding Sasha and all the wonderful support and information from other families who have been there and understand. And finally, we are so proud of our Gaia's spirit and determination. Yep, so that's it. That is what my mom wrote in this book. Wow. That's so special. But yeah, there is so many other stories in these books and it's just so amazing to look and definitely look back like to see I was 10 when my mom wrote that and to see now that I'm almost 25 like how far I have come and just like how much I just have proved to people around me, society, just like I can do it and I can accomplish really anything I set my mind to. Like of course some things are harder for me but it doesn't mean it's impossible. You know sometimes I just have to work harder and I have won that. But yeah it's just an amazing you know thing to have these books and I just love looking back on it and just like even the shock I'm wearing. This is from last year and um, from um, Ignacio Alliance a Piaca Stroke. I am one Piaca Stroke survivor and I love sailing my life on my channel, my experience. And I know there's so many more out there, so many more kids who have had strokes and maybe you had a stroke and or you 
or a parent who has a kid who had a stroke or you know someone who had a stroke just know that you're not alone and there's yes there is a lot of unknowns but there's so much hope that comes with it and the brain is incredible it is incredible and you know having an MRI when I was like 10 like it shows that my brain like it was creating pathways and that is just an incredible thing and yeah I learned differently but my brain has learned to adapt have learned to you know develop pathways to you know be able to do things and that is like the most incredible thing and if you know me you know I am incredible like with math and there's one thing I can do that is so crazy and weird that no one else I know can do and that is remember everyone's birthdays and I truly believe it has something to do with the way my brain works and it's just like so funny that I can do that and I truly believe it has to do with you know having a stroke and just like the way my brain is and how it works but you know being a pediatric stroke survivor yeah it is hard but I, I'm so strong and I, you know, try to remind myself that when I feel like, you know, I can't do something or, you know, life is hard or like I'm having a bad day, you know? But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and turn on post notifications, follow me on social media, and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Have an amazing day. Bye.